Welcome guys. Um, my name is Vicki Jaskowitz. I am the advisor in the School of Nursing. Um, my job is to advise all the admitted students. So you are here for the traditional program and the traditional program you are pre-nursing students before you are admitted to the nursing program. So all pre-nursing students are advised in the Student Success Center. Have any of you seen any of the... Hi Charles, come on in. Perfect timing. You I'm, just said Student I know. Success Center. So this is Chelsea Smith. She's the pre-nursing advisor. So anybody doing prereqs, general education requirements, see Chelsea in the Student Success Center. Um, all you have to do is call and make an appointment. It's very simple. I'll write her number or her the number on the board. Um, but that's who you see as a pre-nursing student. Then once you're admitted to the program, then you're my student. So today is something new. Um, we're recording this. We never normally do, but we are recording it. So lucky me, I get to be recorded. Um, <laughs> not one of my favorite things to do, but got to do it today. Um, so this meeting is just a very informal meeting. I don't have a PowerPoint. I have lots to tell you. You're here to ask me a zillion questions questions and I'm here to answer all your questions. Um, you've taken the time to come to this meeting out of your busy schedules so I'm going to give you all the information that you need to apply to our program. Um, but what I'd like to do at the beginning is I like to kind of see who my audience is so I like to go around the room, tell me your name, where you're currently going to school, if you're a U of M Flint student, I kind of like to know that. So we're going to start with you. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Jennifer. I'm just now started at UMM Flynn. I had to take summer classes online. Okay, so you're just starting in the, in the you took them um, spring summer here? Yeah. Okay, okay. So, and are you a transfer? Yes, I transferred from OCC. From OCC, okay, very good. And you brought with you? My mom. All right, very good. It's always good to have a, a, another set of eyes and right. ears. So, go ahead, girls. Um, my name is Abigail Max, mm -hmm. and I just graduated from MA, and okay. I did the dental assisting program. Uh huh. So I'm an RDA and um, I work in oral surgery right now. Okay. And I just, I don't know, I want more of a challenge. Okay. I feel like I can do more. So. Okay. So you're into nursing. Yes. Okay. So you're not. I'm going to be a student in the fall. Oh, in the fall. Okay. Very good. My name is Jade Dean. Um, I'm transferring from MOT. Okay. So start here in the fall and then apply um, this winter. Oh, okay. We have a lot of MOT students that transfer. A lot of MOT. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Angie Golick. I'm uh -huh. also from Mott. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, I am, uh, have dual classes right now. Going here here Mott. and Mott? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't mm -hmm. started taking classes here yet, but okay. I plan to in the winter. Okay, okay. Um, and I'm actually, probably something I need to talk to you about, going, want, would like to go into interpreting the Spanish. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Joss, I know I've met you, but you can introduce yourself my to everybody name, else. Uh, Jessica Slade. Um, I'm back at school. It's mm -hmm. been like eight or nine years that mm -hmm. I was here last time. Mm -hmm. um, so things changed. I'm back. I'm ready to go and I'm ready to get in the program. And I can't remember where are you, where did you take classes prior to this? Um, at Mott. Mott. And then I had two or three semesters under my belt mm -hmm. here. Here. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Go ahead. My name is Rachel Champagne. Um, I'm a transfer student from SBSU in Delta. My first semester here was winter, this past winter. Okay. And I'm applying for fall. Well, oh, for winter. the winter. Okay, very good. And this is my boyfriend. oh, yeah. very good, very good. So you live in where do you live? If you go to Saginaw Valley, you went Saginaw. Saginaw. Okay, yeah. I'm from Bay City, so you're in my neck okay. of the woods, and okay. Delta's really in my backyard. So I came to a meeting in February. oh, you did. I did. Okay, I that's good. Smart, smart, smart. You have to know what's going on, right, to apply and have a really strong application. So that's all. That's all good. People can come as many times as they as they wish. That's that's great. So um, we have a lot of students who apply. Um, we don't have enough seats for everybody who applies, unfortunately. And that's every single nursing program. Um, what does the media tell us every day? Where are the jobs? In, in healthcare and in nursing specifically. Um, when my students graduate, they have a guaranteed job. They can go anywhere in the world, unlimited opportunities, and have a guaranteed job for life. Okay, um, there's not a lot of professions that give you that right now. But I always say that nursing has to is a calling. It takes a very special person to be a nurse. You have to have that calling. You can't just do it for a job because you are going to burn out really easily. Nursing is very, very hard, hard work. Um, so you got to have it in your heart to do to nursing, and that's who you want at your bedside, taking care of you or your loved one, somebody who wants to be a nurse, not doing it for a job. 
because you can tell the difference in those people. Absolutely. Um, so this is the traditional program. So the traditional program um, is a five semester program once you enter. Um, it is fall and winter only. You do have spring and summers off. Um, some students take general education requirements if they choose to do that. That's their choice. Some people work all summer long. Some people lay on the beach. That's their choice, you know what I'm saying? But you don't have courses during spring and summer. Nursing courses are not offered for the traditional students during spring and summer, which is a good thing. I think nursing students need a break. Um, and I think a, our, a lot of our nursing students need money. Um, and they need to work to get money for the following year. So um, I think it's a good thing to, ha to have that break. Um, the, the traditional program, we admit twice a year every fall and every winter. So students apply in the fall to get in for winter or students apply in the winter to get in for fall. So I know you said that you were going to apply now to get in for winter. Anybody else applying to get in for winter also? A few of you guys? OK. Um, so you saw the nursing applications. They got up on the web August 1st. I know we were getting lots of calls, lots of calls, beginning of, G beginning of July. Where's the application? Where's the application? Just kind of crazy busy. Um, so it's up there. Um, and you can, you know, print that off. You have until Friday, September 14th to submit that application, OK? It has to be in. If you're going to mail it in, it has to be postmarked by that day. If you're going to bring it in, again, we close at 5 that day. So you need to submit it by then. Um, typically, we, well, the past couple of semesters, we've been admitting more than 40 students. Typically, it's 40 in the fall. We admit and 40 in the winter. Um, but this past, for those who were entered in this past fall, we admitted 48. And the semester before that, we admitted 45. So anywhere from 40 to 48, depending on the applicant pool. But we're trying to admit more students. And, and students and parents and people in the community, they say that to us all the time. Why are you not admitting more? There's a nursing shortage. Well, there's many reasons why. Um, one, there is um, clinical faculty. There's a shortage of clinical faculty to teach. Um, it's very hard to find clinical faculty. We are not the only nursing program in this area. There are many, many nursing programs. Um, Mott's in our backyard. Saginaw Valley's not that far. Delta's not that far. OCC's not that far. OU's not that far. MSU. They all have nursing programs. So we're all, we all of us nursing programs, we all have to have clinical sites and opportunities for all of our students. Plus, there's a shortage of faculty to teach at the university. You have to have a minimum of a master's degree. But at the University of Michigan, we like you to have a terminal degree, have a, a DNP, Doctor of Nursing Practice, or a PhD. So again, those are hard to find. And then space. There's always an issue of space at all universities to admit those students. Because not only do you have classrooms, so this classroom we just did, um, a million dollar renovation of classrooms and simulation center two years ago, correct? Two years? Three? Three years ago? Okay. Um, and these classrooms seat 45 because we were admitting 40 at the time. Now we're admitting 48, so our students, we have to find a different classroom for our students because 48 will not fit in this room. So that's another issue. So we're trying to admit as many as we possibly can. But the other portion of that is the state of Michigan um, Board of Nursing, they decide how many students that you can admit to your program. They mandate that number, OK? Um, so we can't admit more than, um, than we are required to admit. So those are, those are issues that every nursing program is having that we can't, you know, they want to admit more, but they can't because of those shortages. Um, so as I said, there's no dumb question. Somebody's thinking the same thing as you guys are. Um, so ask away, OK? So before I start, what burning questions do you have? Any? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. For the fall, uh -huh. don't get accepted. Mm -hmm. What do you recommend somebody doing while they're waiting to reapply? Okay, so that happens a lot. Students will apply, and sometimes they don't get in the first time. Um, and so I recommend that in this packet that I gave you, there are courses in the nursing program. There's, there's uh, five or six courses that you can take ahead of time. There are nursing courses in the nursing program, but we allow you to take them ahead of time. I suggest that if you don't get in, start working on those, OK? Um, and that gives you something to do. Not. There are some students that apply, don't get in, and they have everything done. They have all their gen eds done, all their nursing prereqs. Then work, OK? You don't have to be going to school at all. 
you can work, save some money so that when you do get into the program. To apply to the nursing program, you only have to be an admitted student at U of M Flint. You don't have to be taking classes to apply to our program. And that happens sometimes, okay? So if you're looking in the top portion here is the prereqs, and I'm gonna go over these. And then the second part here, the bottom part, is um, the nursing curriculum. In the nursing curriculum, in the first semester, pharmacology can be taken ahead of time. We don't necessarily recommend that. Um, pharmacology goes hand in hand with nursing courses, so we really want you to take it with nursing courses. But if for some reason you have to take it, you want to take it as close to the program as possible because pharmacology is drugs. Drugs change. If you're not using that knowledge, you use that. You lose that knowledge. Okay, so that's one, one little tip there. Um, but then developmental psych, that is a course that can be taken ahead of time. A lot of students do. In semester two, um, research and nursing can be taken ahead of time. Research and nursing, just a heads up, is only offered fall and winter term. It's not offered spring and summer. So if you want to take it ahead of time, plan to take it in a fall or a winter term um, because of it's not offered spring or summer. In semester three, um, NSC 178, Legal Moral Decisions in Nursing Healthcare. Again, that's another one that can be taken ahead of time. That is a 100% online course offered fall, winter, spring, and summer, so you can take it at any time. Semester four, nursing electives. I'll go through those in a second. Um, nutrition, again, another course that you can take ahead of time. I know those of you who are at MOT, okay, if you took AHLT, that's the nutrition course at MOT, that transfers as NUR 205. And if you get that transfer credit, which you should, then all you need to do is we have a one credit nutrition update course. That's all that you have to take. You don't have to retake nutrition. So if you have and if you take AHLT at Mott and then you take NSC 208 here at U of M Flint, it's NSC 208, the two of those are the equivalent of nutrition that we require. Okay? Go ahead. What about the pharmacology? No, farm you have to take here, it doesn't transfer from MOT. You will have to take it here. So if you took it already, you're going to have to retake that, okay? Farm is very, very important class. You um, do drugs, not do drugs, but you <laughs> not do drugs, but you, um, you know, learn about all the drugs every single semester throughout the nursing program, okay? Very important class. And then um, in the last semester, semester five, transcultural nursing or transcultural healthcare, nursing 369, that is another one that you can take. That one's online and face to face. Come on in, how are you? Come on in. Tell me your name again. Daniela. Daniela, yeah, that's right. Um, and so that Nursing 369 is offered face-to-face -face and online every single semester, okay? So those are the things that you can be doing ahead of time if you choose to do that. I highly recommend that students get these courses done before they start the program. We have, uh, for fall 18, we've condensed the curriculum. It used to be a six semester program, and now it's five. So everything we were doing in six, we now are moving to five. And so if you're looking at semesters and you're looking at credit-wise, the very first semester, if you have to take all four courses, that's 15 credits. Now, normally students, you know, 15 credits, that's not a big deal. I've taken 15 credits a semester when you're doing prereqs, but nursing program is very, very different. So 15 credits in nursing is like taking maybe 20 to 22 credits because you have your theory courses, your nursing courses to go to. In addition, you have clinical, you have care plans, you have reading, 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 and more reading. You're never caught up on your reading. You have group work to do. You have research to do. You have research papers to do. Um, your care plans that you do for every clinical course. Uh, students are doing care plans that are anywhere from 25 to 50 pages, okay? So it's just a lot more work um, and I tell students this all the time nursing is very rigorous and you have to apply that knowledge you're learning in nursing and you have to apply it in the clinical setting and you have to use your critical thinking skills okay so it's not when you were doing your prereqs it's a lot of memorization and then you lose that information before the next test you have to know this information because what you learn in first semester thank you so much what you learn in first semester builds for second semester what you learn in first and second semester builds for third semester. Because at the end of this journey, at the end of nursing school, you have a Bachelor of Science in Nursing, okay? That's all that you have. You are not a nurse when you graduate. 
At the end of this journey, you have to take nursing state boards called the NCLEX exam. Once you pass that exam, then you are finally a nurse, okay? So you are an RN, registered nurse, with a Bachelor of Science in Nursing, okay? If someone graduates from an associate's degree program, then they have an, they're an RN with an, an ADN, RN with an associate's degree in nursing, okay? So you have to make sure that you have, you gain this knowledge because you have to pass that test. Here at U of M Flint, we have a very high first time pass rate, mid 90s. That's very, very high for first time pass rates, very high. We, we prepare you to take that test and pass that test the very first time, okay? Um, because it's a lot of money, it's $200 to take that test. And if you don't pass, then it's another $200 to take that test and you can't take it for 45 days. So someone who doesn't pass that test, then that's two months of lost nursing wages, okay? Nursing students, they're typically starting out when they graduate, depending on where, Genesee County is one of the higher paid counties. Most of my nursing students are starting out at $60,000 a year, okay? That is good money, but again, you don't go into nursing for the money, you go into because you have that calling that you want to help people, okay? Um, so when I'm talking about all the courses and extra courses you can do, when I was talking about nursing electives, so nursing electives, you can, or you have to do all your gen eds, you have to do nursing prerequisites, you have to do the nursing core curriculum, but then you have two additional courses to take called nursing electives. Nursing electives are 350 to 399 courses, okay? Um, and they're to enhance your nursing education. So the courses that we might that we have, um, one is um, oh gosh, I'm drawing a blank. Um, uh, one is um, um, computers. women, computers and healthcare. Another one, yeah. what did you say? End of life care, spiritual care, uh, women's health is another one. So they're again really good courses offered in nursing to enhance your nursing education. Okay, so you have to do two of those, but. For general education requirements, you all have to do technology, three credits of technology. It's one of the, what, one of the general ed requirements, okay? If you take NSC 373, that's the computers and healthcare, that counts as technology and it also counts as three credits of nursing elective. So it's a double bingo there, right? Okay, and now I'm saving you time and saving you money. So that's the course I would recommend for one of those. And then you will have to pick up another course for your other one. Um, we offer anywhere from, most of the nursing electives are two and three credits, okay? Um, and so you will have to pick up another two or three credit elective at some point in time. The other thing that I wanna point out to you is that it's better for you to get all your gen eds completed before you start this program because you can see the credit wise in here and adding extra courses is too tough to do. You will have to do gen eds during spring and summer and then if you do them spring summer then you have no break from nursing, okay? So what I suggest is getting them done before you start the program because once you enter this program for nursing, you are now in a professional program. Professional programs cost more per credit hour. Nursing students pay more per credit hour and the reason being is it is because of um, clinical. We have to pay all those clinical instructors. We, the state mandates, there's an eight to one ratio. So there's one clinical instructor to eight students maximum. And so we have to pay all those clinical instructors and that's why you guys pay higher tuition. Well, once I send that list to the registrar's office saying, you are now a nursing student, you pay higher tuition whether you're doing a nursing course, a gen ed course, or whatever course, from there until you graduate, okay? But again, if you get those gen eds done beforehand, you don't pay that higher tuition, okay? So just a tip, save you a little bit of money there, okay? So let's go back to the... Um, um, prerequisite courses, okay? You can see there's eight listed. You have to have anatomy and physiology, you have one and two. Microbiology has to be with the lab. You need chemistry with the lab, and I'm gonna go back to that in a second. English 111, 112, your typical college writing courses that you need. You need to know how to write. There's a tremendous amount of writing that you do in this nursing program. You have to know how to research, you have to be a good writer. But if you're not, 
there are resources on this campus to help you be a better writer. We have a writing center. It's all free to students. Seek those resources out, OK? Um, then you have to do Nursing 110. It's just an introduction to professional nursing course. It tells you what nursing is all about. We talk about the profession of nursing. We do APA format, because that's when you're in the nursing program, you do APA format. And all your prereqs, most of them are probably MLA format, but now you learn APA and then and some medical terminology. So it's a, a multitude of things for that course. And then pathophysiology. So <clears throat> let me go back to chemistry. So for chemistry, we've changed the requirement. Um, students used to be able to, you had to take Chem 150, 151, okay? And then in the first semester of the nursing program, um, biochem was required, Chem 252. Chem 252 is no longer required, and everyone's like, yes, don't have to take biochem, okay? Now the chem requirement is you have to have Chem 150, 151, that's the lab or the lecture in the lab, that's general chemistry, that's the minimum. You can have that or higher. So if you're a transfer student and you transfer in organic chem or you transfer in biochem or some other higher chem, we're going to use that grade. You don't have to go back and take Chem 150, 151, OK? So it's we use for your nursing application, if you've taken many chemistry courses, we take the highest chemistry grade for lecture and lab for your nursing application. OK? That's what we use. And it doesn't matter. Students say to me all the time, well, what if I had chemistry theory at Mott, but then I had chemistry lecture here? It doesn't matter where you take them, as long as you have a three or four credit lecture and a one credit lab. OK? It doesn't matter to us. And again, we're going to use the highest grade for your nursing application if you have many chemistry courses. OK? Let's talk about pathophysiology. Anybody in patho right now? Anybody? No. In the fall, you're going to take, anybody take it in the fall? OK. So this, I always give big tips. So this is a big tip for you. Again, you've taken the time to come today. Big tip. Pathophysiology is the most important class for applying to our program. How students do in patho determines if you're going to get into this program. Pathophysiology is the foundation of nursing. You use that knowledge every single day in nursing school, and you will use that knowledge every single day as a nurse. Okay? So having a strong foundation of pathophysiology will help you definitely be successful in our program because our program is very heavy patho focused. Okay? And so one of the things that we do, and I'm sure you saw it on the application, um, we, we look at patho grades. Okay? That is the, one of the very first things when we're reviewing nursing applications. We look at your patho grade. First of all, where you took it if you took it here, and what grade you got in it if you had to repeat the course. If you are applying to the program in the fall, and you're taking it at, then, at that time, we look at midterm grades for patho. That is the only course that we look at midterm grades. That's it. That's how important that course is, OK? Um, so big tip, start from the very beginning. Start reading ahead of time. There are, we typically hire anywhere from five to eight tutors for that course. They are nursing students in the program. They are top-notch students. Seek out tutors, okay? Get a study buddy. Don't get behind in reading. Get note cards. Do note cards every day. Whatever you need to do to be successful. That is not an easy course. It is a very doable course. Dr. Turkelson teaches it in the spring, and uh, Professor Marjorie Murray Wright teaches it in fall and winter. They are both phenomenal two of the best instructors you will ever have. They're seasoned nurses, incredibly smart. You will love them. I've never heard any student for either of those say anything badly about them. They loved them. So it's a very challenging course, but it's a very doable course too. But if you're taking patho, you want to have a little lighter load. You don't want to be taking patho and micro together. You really want to take patho and maybe some gen eds or some other nursing courses, but not another science course. It just requires a lot of, a lot of time, OK? So that's the big tip. Any questions on anatomy, physiology, any of the prerequisite nursing courses? Go ahead. No. If you're taking it here, we have access, and we run that report, and we see those grades. But if you're taking it somewhere else, yes, it does say in that nursing application, it does say that you have to submit that grade to me by a certain date. Mm -hmm. yeah, it does say that. So um, we recommend that you take it here, because you will get that foundation that you need to be su successful in our program. Go ahead. Did you have a question? Yeah. So 
I'm taking uh, patho in the fall and then micro, or I'm taking chemistry in the winter and then I have to take micro in the spring. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to apply in the winter. Uh-huh, that's fine. So, that's okay. Yeah. So to apply to the nursing program, um, I'm going to go through all the criteria in detail. But in order to apply, you only have to have four prereqs completed to apply. Okay? So it's a little bit different for winter and, and um, fall. So let me explain. So students who are applying in the fall to get into the nursing program, admitted to the nursing program for winter, if you only have four prereqs completed, that means you have to be in the remainder of those four prereqs in the fall term. Because if you are admitted for January start, all your prereqs have to be completed by then. Okay? So if you only have four, then you have to be in the remainder of those four, the rest of them, in the fall term. But if you're applying in the winter to get in for fall, okay, and you only have four prereqs completed, you have winter, spring, and summer to finish all of those prerequisite courses, okay? So it varies. Does that make sense? The more prereqs you have completed, the stronger your nursing application. If you have pathophysiology completed with grade, much stronger nursing application. The higher your prereq GPA, the stronger your nursing application. Okay, those factors all, uh, they, those things all factor in. Um, in each prerequisite course, you have to have a minimum of a C plus grade, with the exception of ke chemistry, you can have a C in chemistry, okay? But when you apply to the nursing program, one of the criteria is you have to have a minimum of a 2.75 prereq GPA. So what that means, that's cumulative prereq GPA. So of these prereqs, let's say you have five completed and you're applying to the program, those five, between the five, you have to have a minimum of a 2.75 between the five of those. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so it's minimum 2.75 prereq GPA, minimum 2.75 last 30 credit GPA, and I'll go into that. You have to do an essay, and you have to have references. Those are the four things that we look at here. We don't interview students here. Many nursing schools interview, okay? We don't do that here. Um, a lot of nursing schools have what they call a TEAS or a HESI or ATI test that test you on your knowledge of your prerequisite courses. And if you don't get a certain score, you can't apply to the program. We don't have that here. Um, we used to have it a long time ago. We got rid of that. But we use the HESI system when you start the program. So the HESI system, once you're in the program, we test you on that content at the end of each semester of that clinical course. And then you get a certain number, okay? How you do on HESI tests correlates on how you're going to do on NCLEX. They're very similar to NCLEX. So you have all this time in the nursing program to prepare and figure out how to take those tests because NCLEX is just like that. Because with nursing, again, you will always have multiple choice questions and you will have, again, you'll have a question, you'll have four answers, but in nursing it's two answers will be right and two answers will be wrong and you have to pick the best, best out of those two, which one is right, which one is the best one, okay? And that's how NCLEX tests you when you take that test, so you have many opportunities to learn how to do that, okay? Um, so let's go into detail of all these specific things. So does everybody understand minimum 2.75 in the prerequisites, okay? So what you have completed. So if you're in any courses when you apply, those courses are not counted. We, for your nursing application, we only count the courses that you have completed, okay? That's it, thank you, Jason, so much. Um, then you have to have a 2.75 in last 30 credits. So students always say, last 30 credits, what do you mean by that? Are you looking at my cumulative GPA? We see your cumulative GPA if you're here at U of M Flint or for your transfer student. We have a lot of transfer students here at U of M Flint, okay? We see that, but for the nursing application, we're only counting your last 30 credits. The reason why we do that is you can go to school and right from high school to college, and that first semester in college can be, it could be an eye opener, okay? Some students, that's a huge transition, and they don't do well that freshman year. I just spoke to a student um, prior to coming to this meeting, 
He's a senior in high school, uh, didn't do well his freshman year or his sophomore year. And now he's, he did very well his junior year, but again, that hurts his cumulative GPA. So we are not going to punish you for how you did your freshman year in college. That's why we're not looking at your cumulative GPA. We're only looking at the last 30 credits. So when I say last 30 credits, how it works is, so we look at the latest completed semester when you apply, and we go backwards in chronological order. It doesn't matter where you take these courses. You could have one semester at Ma, another semester at OCC, and a semester before that at SVSU. It doesn't matter, but it matters in chronological order. So let's say you're applying in the fall to get in for winter, and let's say um, for summer, okay, this summer, summer 18, you're taking 10 credits. Let's not do that, because that's a lot for summer. <laughs> Let's say five. <laughs> five credits, OK? Then in spring 18, you took five credits, OK? Then in, but let's say this is at OCC. Let's say this is at Mott, just saying. And then let's say before that would be winter 18. Let's say you took 10 credits, and it was at U of M Flint, OK? So this would be 10, 15, 20 credits, OK? Then let's say fall 18, you took 15 credits, again, at U of M Flint, OK? So if we're adding all this up, this is 10, 20, 30, 35, OK? We're not out of these 15 credits. We're not going to just pick out 10 credits to get the 30. We're going to count all 15 credits, because what if half of these were A's and half of them were E's? How would that be fair to everybody else, OK? So for this student, we're counting 35 credits for them, OK? It could be 30 for you. It could be 29 for you. It could be, usually it's the last 30 credits. Most people have more than 30. It could be 45 credits, OK? It just depends on how many credits you took each semester. So if you, only, if you took 15 and 15, it would only be 30 credits. There would only be two semesters for you. Does that make sense? OK. So your last 30 credits, you have to have a minimum of a 2.752. So please figure out your GPA, because I'm amazed at the students who apply, who don't figure that out. So then when I go to score their application, because I advise all, in, all nursing students that to the program, but I, the other part of my job is I am in charge of coordinating all nursing applications. They all come to me. I score them all. I'm on the committee who decides who's getting in. So I'm scoring them, and if some, somebody has a 2.74, that means they didn't meet the criteria, and that's an automatic no. So why would you go through all the work of the nursing application, getting the references, doing everything you need to do, and not even qualify? Okay, So make sure that you qualify. If you don't know how to do that, there are GPA calculations on the web. You have Chelsea as your advisor to help you with that. Okay, um, So make sure you do meet that criteria. Go ahead. So I think I'm taking or 14 credits this semester and then if I'm applying next semester so you'll count those credits I took from this semester and correct then my last semester at Ma I was in a different program so mm -hmm. does it matter what the credits are at all? Mm -mm. No not at all it doesn't matter if you were a different program different major okay we're counting the last minimum last 30 credits, credits. Okay. yep doesn't matter mm -hmm. it's back in chronological order okay makes sense okay then the third thing that we look at is, well, the third thing you have to do is you have to do an essay. So for the essay, and now that we're up on the thing, I'm going to pull this up. The essay is one or two questions that you have to answer. And students always ask me all the time, well, how should I answer, or how should I do the essay? How should I complete the essay? The biggest tip that I can give you for the essay is following directions. And that's the biggest tip that I can give all of you for the entire nursing application. The nursing application is the easiest part of nursing. And students just freak out at it, OK? It's the easiest part. Follow directions, follow directions, follow directions, follow directions. Can I say that 15 more times, OK? Nursing, that is the expectation of nursing. Get used to that now, OK? Read. Read the whole application. Read it again, and maybe read it a third time. Because everything you need in that application is there, OK? I had a student that came in to turn in their application. 
The application says that you have to put all your documents in an envelope, tells you what pages you have to submit, tells you, you have to put your name on the outside of the envelope with your University of Michigan ID number. So a student came in and he had three or four pieces of paper and he said, I'm here to turn in my nursing application. <laughs> follow directions, follow directions, follow directions, read. I said, well, did you read the application? No, I didn't read it. <laughs> okay, so you're making an impression to me, okay, and that's the expectation in nursing. You follow directions and you read, okay? You have to do that. Uh, if you don't read, you're gonna miss out on something and then you're gonna be in trouble in nursing, okay? So, um, so what I'm doing right now is I'm gonna go on the, whoops, I'm gonna go on the web. And as you know, the nursing application is up there, but it's just easier for me to show you here. Okay, so I'm on the nursing website right now, as you can see on the, the screen. A um, Couple things I wanna point out is there's a contact us right here so this is where we're located. If you follow us on Facebook and Twitter, we're always posting things there, okay? Um, if you click on this contact us, so let's say you forgot a question to ask me, okay? You can click on contact us, and then there will be a box that comes up, and you can put in a question, hit submit, and then it automatically goes to a, one of our secretaries, and then either they answer it or they triage it to one of the advisors, okay? So that is a contact for you, okay? The other thing too, Chelsea and I, we're together we're a team um, and so she knows a lot of information about the program um, she's not the type of person that if she doesn't know the answer she's gonna make it up no she calls me any of the advisors do call me you guys are very fortunate because um, Chelsea now is only seeing pre-nursing students it used to be that pre-nursing students saw everybody in student success and student success is great they do the advisors do know what they're doing but now it's only Chelsea so Chelsea only sees pre-nursing students so she knows what she's doing and again if she doesn't know the answer she will call me she'll instant message me um, we're a team okay we all want students to be successful we do want you to get into the nursing program here okay so I'm going on the left hand side here just to undergrad nursing and I'm going to the traditional BSN program. We have several programs in the School of Nursing, several. Um, we have undergrad and graduate. So the RN to BSN program is people who went to an associate's degree program at a community college, finished their nursing degree, and then are coming back to school for their bachelor's degree, okay? That is a 100% online program. But that is our biggest program in the School of Nursing because what's happening now is hospitals are saying that they want BSN prepared nurses, okay? There are a lot of ADN nurses out there. They're very good nurse ADN programs, but they want BSN nurses because there's a couple reasons why. Um, all hospitals are seeking out magnet status. That is an elite status um, at the hospital. It's a five-year process. U of M Ann Arbor is an, a magnet status hospital. Uh, Beaumont Hospital is a magnet status hospital, okay? So one of the criteria of the zillion criteria that they do for magnet status, one of the criteria is that majority of their nurses are BSN prepared, okay? So that's one of the reasons why you want your bachelor's degree and not an associate's degree in today's world. So all hospitals want BSN prepared because the research shows, and everything in nursing is research-based or evidence-based practice, the research shows Patients who are cared for by BSN nurses versus associate degree nurses have better outcomes, and that's what they want. Hospitals want better outcomes, okay? That's, what they, that's why they want to hire BSN nurses. And that's why ADN nurses are all coming back to school because their hospitals are telling them, you've been an ADN nurse for us for 10 years, whatever that might be. You've been a great nurse, but we want you to get your bachelor's degree. We're giving you five years to do it. If you don't get it done in five years, then you're no longer employed here. And it's lots and lots of hospitals are doing that now, okay? Um, so that's why we have such an influx in the RN to BSN program. So here's the traditional program. If you click on that at the very bottom here, I mean, here's admission. It tells you everything that you need that I'm talking about now. Science prereqs, non-science prereqs. Here's the nursing application, okay? And so if you click on this, <clears throat> it brings up the nursing application, okay? So on the first page, it gives you 
I am very a, de a very detail oriented person, and I'm very specific at everything that you need. I want to make sure that you know what you need. Okay, so this first page just gives you a checklist of everything you need. It tells you here in yellow that if you're a transfer student, you've already transferred. You, you've already sent your transcripts over here to be admitted to this university. But with your nursing application, you have to have transcripts again. Okay, and it tells you you need to do that. It amazes me the applications that I get with no transcripts attached, okay? That's an automatic no if you don't have all the documentation. So if you send them here, you got to send them again with your nursing application. They can be unofficial or official. When I say official, you can have them mailed right to your home, just don't open them, okay? Unofficial me might mean that if you're a student at Mott, you go over to Mott, you go to the registrar and say, I need, an, I need a student copy. They put them in an envelope, they seal the envelope, they uh, write their name over the envelope, it's in an official envelope. That's what I mean by unofficial. You can't just go into your student account, okay, print off unofficial transcripts, stuff them in an envelope. You can't do that, okay? Anybody can ch change a grade that way on a transcript. Anybody can, okay? Um, so that gives you all of the information that you need, what you need, where things are, and what pages, okay? Tells you all the essential information. Here's pathophysiology. It tells you that, hey, if you're in it in fall, we're going to be looking at midterm grades. This is when you have to submit that midterm grade. Um, tells you about tuition and how much more expensive it is. Um, requirements, that you have to do a background check. And then here's the application. And again, it's just a typable fo form you type in. Um, and I'm amazed how this is bolded, underlined, and highlighted, and I will get applications that are hand wrote. Where do you think those go? In the note pile, absolutely. Follow, what do I say all the time? Follow directions, follow directions, follow directions, okay? You can type in, save it to your desktop. When you're all done, print it off, put it in the envelope, okay? Not that hard to do. So your, I was talking about the essay. Okay, let me find it here. Oh, they're done. So, it's two questions. We've changed the question. We've had the same question for a while. We've changed it. Now we have two questions that you have to answer, and you have to do this on one page. Follow directions. What does it say? Both questions on one page. Must be double space, Times New Roman. Include your university ID, not your name. Okay? So you have to tell us a time when you made a difference in someone's life. And then the other one is nursing programs are academically, academically rigorous. What characteristics do you possess that will make you successful in the nursing program at the University of Michigan Flint? Okay? Not hard questions, right? We are not looking for a specific answer. There's no right answer, no wrong answer. What we're looking for is did you follow directions? Okay? Did you answer the questions? Do you have correct punctuation, spelling, grammar? That's what we're looking for. Okay? There's no right or wrong answer at all. Everybody's going to answer those questions differently. Okay? Pretty simple, right? Pretty simple. So that's the third thing is your essay. Fourth thing is references. You have to have two references, and your references are in the nursing application. But I also want to show you, here's the reference form. It's on the website 365 days a year. So if you are in a class and you need a reference from a faculty member, you can download that application at any time and give to them. You don't have to wait till that nursing application comes out. Okay? So for your Again, it is in your, um, your references are in, your app, in the application. Let me go to find them here. Here they are right here. Okay. So you see what they're asking, the person writing the reference for you, what they're asking. Um, they don't, the references do not have to be typed. They can be typed if you choose to do that. They can be handwritten. It does not matter to us. Okay. They can write comments in there. Um, other information, they sign it, date it, and it tells them, put it in an envelope and give it back to you. If that envelope is not signed on the back, which it states, when you get it back from them, you have to tell them, please make sure you sign that envelope, okay? Because we have to have that signature on that envelope, okay? It's an invalid reference if it's not, okay? Again, we're not here to trick you at all. But these are the things you have to do. Follow directions, follow directions, follow directions. Go ahead. Is there an advantage to do three references? No, not at all. Um, you have to have two references, one academic and one professional. You can have a third reference if you choose it. You don't get extra points for having a, uh, a reference, but some people do put in a third one if, they, if, again, that's what they choose to do. Your academic reference means from a professor that you've had. It doesn't have to be PhD prepared. Anybody that you've had as an instructor, okay? 
Here's another big tip. Of all the prereqs that are here, that you have, what are the, what, what, what subject is most of these prereqs in? Science. Ding, ding, ding. There you go. So, it is very helpful to get science references from science courses that you've taken. Big tip for you right there, okay? Very important. So that's something that we look at for references. Who are they getting these references from? Is it from an English professor or is it from a science professor? Is it from a, pro pro I talk so fast sometimes, a professor at U of M Flint or is it a professor from somebody else? If you've never taken any courses at U of M Flint, you obviously cannot use a reference from U of M Flint. Okay, it's not, it's not gonna hurt you at all, um, but it is beneficial to have U of M Flint faculty members write you references, okay? Um, so academic from a professor that you've had, again, it doesn't have to be from U of M Flint, but it's very beneficial. The other one is professional. So if you work, your supervisor can't be a peer. It can't be if you work for your dad, you can't have your dad write your reference, okay? Um, and, um, if you don't work, you can do two academic references, okay? Most people work. And students will think that they have to seek out a physician or a nurse for a reference. You do not. You just want someone that knows you well, your work ethic and your character, okay? So some people say, well, my, my aunt's friend's brother is a nurse. I'm going to have them write me. You don't need that. You don't get extra points for having a doctor or a nurse write you a reference. Now, maybe you're a nurse's aide and you report to a nurse. That's a different story, okay? Um, but you don't have to seek out those just to have a reference. Um, questions about the reference? Do you have a question? No? What else, girls? Anything? Any questions about references at all? So again, two of those, one academic, one professional, you can have up to a third reference if you choose to do that, okay? And we started limiting it because we had students um, submitting so many references. Like I had a student one time that submitted 10. You don't need to submit 10 references to tell me how great you are. Mm, no, you don't need to do that, okay? <laughs> All right, so the criteria then, oops, cancel this because I want to show you something else. The criteria for getting into the program that we look at here at U of M Flint is prerequisite GPA, minimum 2.75, Last 30 credit GPA, minimum 2.75, an essay, and your references. So the nursing application here at U of M Flint, when you apply and when we meet as a committee, all of your information that you submit is um, looked at very holistically. A lot of nursing programs look only at science GPA or only look at cumulative, cumulative GPA. So we tell students here, if you meet the minimum 2.75, apply, okay? Because everything is, is taken into consideration when we, re, when we review that nursing application, okay? Everything matters. Your science GPA, your prerequisite GPA, your last 30 credit GPA, your essay, your references, all of that matters. We look at it very holistically. Just because you're a 4.0 student does not mean that you're gonna be a good nurse. Does not mean that, okay? So everything matters, take it very seriously. Um, I was telling you big, you know, big tips. Science GPA, there's no minimum to apply, but science GPA is very heavily looked at. Please know that. It is calculated and the committee does know your science GPA. Okay, know that. Um, what else in regard to the criteria for getting into the program? So everything you need is in this application. Um, the other thing that I want to point out is in the application there's essential abilities. So you as a student have to meet all of these skills, these abilities to get into our program. You have to have observation skills, you have to have communication skills, you have to have motor skills, you have to have intellectual conceptual skills, uh, you have to have behavioral and social attributes, non and then if any of these right here, a student, you can come into our program and if you might possess one of those, you could be academically dismissed because you cannot meet those essential abilities. And we have, it's very, very, very rare that a student would be dismissed. But we want you to know, you have to have these abilities to be in our program, okay? 
Um, the other thing is you guys have to do a background check. It's not before you start the program. It's once you're admitted. So once you're admitted, we have an orientation. We talk about all of that, everything you have to do, your health requirements, CPR, all your immunizations, everything you have to do at Hurley. Majority of students do their clinical at Hurley the very first semester, okay? Um, and so all the requirements there too. So we talk about that in an orientation. But I do tell you in this information packet, at the very back, it says estimated expenses. So start saving now. It is very expensive to start any nursing program because of all the requirements. So when I talk about all your immunizations and your health requirements, you have to make sure that you have all your childhood immunizations and you have to have proof of that. If you don't have proof of that, then you have to start them all over or you have to have a blood draw called a titer to see if you're immune to that childhood disease. Okay, those cost money. You have to have a background check. You have to do a drug test. You have to buy your first semester books. You have to buy nursing scrubs from us, okay? Those all add up. It's about two grand to start a nursing program. Not just ours, any nursing program. And the reason why is when you go into the clinical agency, like Hurley and McLaren Genesis, they require that all of our students have those health requirements done, okay? And we have to attest to that, to say yes. Our students have all these immunizations, all these health requirements completed. So just be aware of that. Start saving now because I've had students that got in the program and had to stop out because of financial issues, okay? Um, and we do allow that. The road of life is not one straight road, correct? There are a lot of bumps and curves, okay? So sometimes students get into the program and they have something going on with their family or financial issues or whatever. We allow students petition to ask permission to stop out for a semester, okay? But the most a student can stop out is a year. And then after that, they have to reapply because you lose that nursing knowledge if you stop out longer than that, okay? So sometimes things happen, absolutely. Happens every semester where we have a, a couple students that have to stop out because of life circumstances, okay? Uh, what else did I want to tell you guys? I think I've gone through everything with a nursing application. Gives you other important information. Again, everything that you need is in this application. So read it, read it, and read it again, okay? Um, and it tells you when the orientation is. It says it's mandatory. If you can't be there on that orientation, what does it tell you? Please wait to apply another semester, okay? It's mandatory that you have to be there, okay? What other... It's four o'clock already. Oh, how time flies. <laughs> um, what other questions about prereqs, how to apply, anything like that? I want to talk about the nursing program for just a few minutes in the program. Go ahead. Okay, so if you were to um, take most of these prereqs that you can take before applying to the program, uh -huh. once you get into the program, is most of your days clinicals or do you still have? That, that's a really good question. So once you get into the program, in the very first semester, you have fundamentals of nursing. So that's a clinical course. So you will see all the courses that have a higher credit amount, those are really clinical courses, okay? So for that first semester, you have one eight-hour clinical each week. On top of you, that you have theory. On top of that, you have um, um, lab for health assessment. Health assessment is where you're learning to assess a patient from head to toe. On top of that, you have your other courses. You have papers to write, research, reading, reading. It's like working a full-time job in this nursing program. But it's for that first semester, it's one day a week, eight hours, okay, for clinical. It's not the type of program where you get into the program and then maybe a year later or a semester later you are in the clinical. Our program, once you enter this program, the second week that you are in this program, you are in clinical, you are taking care of patients with the oversight of your clinical instructor, okay? And you have clinical every single semester all the way through this program. So then the second semester, you're doing two clinical then, Med Surge 1 and Mental Health Nursing. You will see Med Surge 1 is an eight credit course, and then Mental Health is five. So you will have two eight hour days of clinical that per week, and then on top of everything else that goes with that. Same thing for third, fourth, and fifth semester, third and fourth semester. You will have two days of clinical each week okay, because you will have two clinical each of those semesters. So when you get into the program, 40 or 48 students are, are admitted with you. That's your family for the entire two and a half years you're in the program. You have all your courses together. But when it comes to the clinical, state mandates that it's a one to eight ratio, so eight of you will be in a clinical group, 
okay? And you are all split up all the time. Then when you get into your last semester, it's very, very different, okay? So nursing 435 synthesis, you are placed with a nurse. That nurse is your preceptor. It's a one-on-one -on -one clinical experience. And you are required to get 126 hours with that preceptor. You are now the nurse. You are now taking care of patients with the oversight of your preceptor. Everything you learned up to nursing, you are implementing in that last semester, okay? For leadership and management, which is nursing 430, that is learning the management piece of nursing. It is not patient care. You are placed, you and one other student, it's a two to one ratio. You and another student are placed with a nurse leader, a nurse manager, a nurse coordinator, a director of nursing, somebody in a leadership position in nursing who is a nurse, who has budget responsibility and people responsibility, okay? So you're learning the management piece of nursing. So those, and that one's at 84 hours. So when you are with a preceptor, you have to get those hours in and you work it out between your schedule when you're gonna get those hours in. It's not every, day, every week on this day. It's very different that last semester, okay? We do clinical at Hurley, Genesis, and McLaren. Those, those are the three hospitals we use. But because you're seeking out a bachelor's degree, you will not have all your clinical in the hospital setting. You have to do mental health nursing in the first, second semester, I should say. Mental health nursing, Hurley and McLaren have behavioral health units, but we, they cannot accommodate all of our students. So some of our students in the fall, um, they're going to Havenwick in Auburn Hills. Detroit Medical Center in Detroit, uh, Oak, New Oakland in Clarkston or Flint. So it just depends. You're not all going to have, again, and all your clinical might not be in Genesee County. So wherever you're coming from, it could be one hour from University of Michigan Flint. And that's not just in our nursing program. Every nursing program has that. Michigan State students go down to, um, Bo to Beaumont for some of their clinical. We are doing the first thing for peds and OB. Most of our students go to Hurley for peds and OB, but we're trying to diversify here and get more clinical sites. So there are two sections for the fall that our students are going to Beaumont for peds, okay? Um, so what we tell students, so if there's eight of you in a group, okay, find a meeting place, jump in a couple cars together and carpool together. Not that hard, right? Okay. Um, so be aware of that, that not every semester you will have clinical in Genesee County. You might not all have in the hospital. The other thing is for community health, which is in third semester, community health is not hospital-based nursing. It's nursing somewhere in the community. So in the community, you could be in an assisted living. You could be in a home health care agency. You could be in a public health department. You could be in a jail with prisoners. We have students that go to Genesee County Jail and Saginaw County Jail. They love it. Great experience. So it's not just in, oh, you could be in a home health care agency. So it's not somewhere in the community, but not in the hospital for community health. Okay? I think that's all that I wanted to tell you about the nursing program. Does it answer your questions? Everyone feel comfortable about what the nursing program entails? Okay? It's a lot of work. A lot of work. Um, and I'm not here to, to scare you by any means, but I'm here to tell you the truth. It's a lot of work. And if you ask anybody in the nursing program, anybody know anybody in the program? Do they tell you that? But it's worth it. It's worth it. Absolutely worth it. Absolutely. And very doable. So you think, oh my gosh, all this work Vicki's telling me, all this. it is very doable. Very doable. We have very, very few students who fail out of our program. I would say less than 1%. I would say 85 to 90 percent of the students who start this program graduate from our program. The students who get in can do this, but it's, it's life issues that get in the way sometimes. That's the reason why. The other thing is working. So we tell students, if you don't have to work, don't. But we know most of you do have to work. So please know that you want to cut back on your hours. You will not be able to work 40 hours and do this nursing program. There's no way you're going to be able to do that, OK? Cut back on your, on your hours. Number one reason for fails in our nursing program is because people are working too many hours, number one. If you're in nursing, you got that coveted seat, covet that seat and do well, <laughs> OK? What other questions do you guys have for me? I'm a little over, and people are probably waiting in the hall, but we have a little bit, a few minutes, are they? Thanks, Chelsea. Go ahead. I'm not sure where, like, who this question will go to even. Mm -hmm. 
um, because I've had the patho before, mm -hmm. and I have my book and everything still from that. I planned on getting an, another book because I didn't know who, like, if I can even use that same book because it's it's been quite some time. Well, or did you take patho here? Yeah. You did? I don't know. You, you have to go on the bookstore website to see because the bookstore is awesome. They give you what book we need, what ISBN number, what edition. Yeah. If I, it's the I same one, that. you're good. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know what edition or what book yeah, they're they using. Have, like different editions. So that's, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. And again, you can email the professors. Yeah, I, I do too. Oh. I just don't know if mine would work with that. I don't know. You'll have to ask them. So have to, the yeah. Who, oh, it would be the, the instructor of the course. The instructor. Yeah. Yeah, because okay. yeah, you're going to have Professor Marjorie Murray Wright in the fall. Yeah, yeah I would ask her. Okay. But She's used the old version, so she would know if she could mm -hmm. adapt it for mm -hmm. okay. yeah. yep. But you're I responsible. This is the thing with nursing. If we have the latest edition and you have an old edition, right. you are responsible for everything in that new edition. So if your book doesn't have it and you're, you're missing that information and you go to the professor and say, I didn't have this in my book, they're going to say, you're responsible for all the information in the new edition. Okay, so that's how it works with nursing. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, Chelsea, is it possible to contact you directly? Oh, the, yep. let me, yes. Oh, you do? Oh, too. very good. Okay. Yeah, so most of you I've met with already, but if you wanted to grab one of these yeah. on your way out, go ahead. So you just call the Student Success Center, make an appointment with them. You don't call S Chelsea um, directly. Right. Someone's always at that front desk answering the phone. Mm -hmm. And then um, there's also on the Student Success Center website a link where you can schedule an, uh, an appointment online, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Chelsea, Chelsea will meet with you in person, by phone, by um, Skype. Mm -hmm. You don't have to physically come in if you don't need to. Would you be able to help like, check, just check the boxes on the nursing application to make sure we're on? I did that with a student today just to make sure because just she sure was we're really nervous about it. <laughs> it's yes. the easiest part. It really yeah. is the easiest and, part. And I tell students, you're not going to get docked points because you didn't fill it out perfectly. You're not. I understand that. What you, you will get automatic no's if you do not submit your transcripts, if you do not submit your essay, or you don't submit your references. That's the only way it's going to be an automatic no, guys. That's the only way. Fill it out to the best of your knowledge, okay? It's not hard at all, um, but deep breath on that. Deep breath. That's what I did today. Deep breath, like, yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm taking three classes in the fall mm -hmm. that like, they're, I have to put my grades in for the um, application. Do I just leave that section? You leave it blank. blank. Yeah, okay. you don't have a grade for it. You're taking them in okay. the fall. Mm -hmm. no, right, I'm you leave sure. it blank. Yep, exactly. What it does ask you to do is submit a copy of your current registered classes. Right. So you can see right. Mm -hmm. yeah. sure. Yes, exactly. We see what you're in. Right. Yeah. And when I'm scoring these nursing applications, guys, I'm going with a fine tooth comb. I've got your transfer credit up there. I'm looking at what you already took. I, I'm looking at everything. So if I have questions, I do email students all the time if I have a question in regards to You state that you have this completed, but I don't see that you got credit for this. You know what I'm saying? I do that. But Fill it up to the best of your knowledge. Okay. What other questions? Y'all good? Y'all okay? You glad you came? Yeah. Yeah? All right. Found, did you find it helpful? All right. Very good. Excellent. Excellent. So, you guys, thank you for coming. I hope, again, I hope you found it helpful. I look forward to your application in the near future. Okay? And you can take Chelsea's card if you need to meet with her.